It's the gear tester here. Welcome to my initial impressions review on the Ruger American Gen 2 ranch rifle. My rifle is chambered in 5.56. As I observe this firearm, I find it to be a handsome, well-designed, good-looking firearm with an excellent color scheme. In this initial impressions review, I'll be zeroing this rifle, I'll be firing 30 rounds total at 30, 50, and 100 yards. The optic I have on this firearm is a Leopold FX2 Ultralight 2.5 by 20 scope. It weighs in at just 6 ounces. All the ammunition I'm firing is Lake City XM193. Thanks for joining me, the gear tester, for my initial impressions review of the Ruger American Gen 2 ranch rifle. So here's my first three shot group at about 30 yards, uh, getting the uh, Ruger American Gen 2 ranch rifle in 223 zeroed. So I was holding down here, but I was worried about how accurate it's going to be. I think it's going to be an accurate gun. I chose to shoot the groups at 30 and 50 yards standing to minimize my time in the snow. It was relatively cold. I could have gotten smaller groups if I would have shot in the prone. At 100 yards, I did choose to uh, switch out the bipod, change its configuration, and shoot laying down, and I got better groups at 100 yards. So this is kind of a hasty zeroing session here for this initial impressions review. So here's my first four three-shot groups. I was holding dead center of the paper. Uh, first three right there. Then I adjusted my scope, held again, center, here, adjusted, held right on this target, boom, and then just shot here, got there. So there's something to be said for a gun that's easy uh, and simple to zero, and I've got a good scope and a good rifle. The targets you were just looking at were shot at 30 yards. I then proceeded to walk down the 50 yards and shoot these two targets, starting with target number one and moving to target number two. I felt I had a, a rough uh, zero at the 50-yard line, and so I moved down to 100 yards. At 100 yards, the limitations of the Leopold FX2 Ultralight 2.5 by 20 optic became more apparent. So for my first range report, certainly by my second range report on this rifle, I will have a, a 3 by 9 optic that will allow me to see what I'm shooting at more effectively. You can't hit what you can't see, and the limitations of the scope, uh, I think, minimized how accurate I was, or maybe how comfortable I was shooting. I ended up getting, for me at least, relatively good groups, particularly uh, my best group of three that I fired here at the 100-yard mark. This is my first group at 100 yards with the Ruger American Ranch Rifle Gen 2. And you can see here, that's a pretty good group. I'm laying down, I'm shooting off a tripod, all right? But I just hovered my um, reticle right there, and I'm just shooting it using a Leopold, okay, 2.5 power optic. So this is a fixed 2.5, so basically I can see just a little bit of the edges of it. So it'd be better to have a 3 by 9 on this opt uh, on this gun, and that's what I'll ultimately put. I think I'm going to get a Trigicon 3 by 9 on it. I've had one of those on a, another gun that I really like. But for right now, this optic was ready and available, so I just threw it on, and I'm, I'm enjoying shooting this gun. Um, things I just love, okay, about this ranch rifle. My buddies had one for about two and a half, three years, one of the original ranch rifles chambered in 5.56. And uh, I've enjoyed watching him shoot it. I've enjoyed shooting it. It's been a very accurate gun, but I'm small of stature. And so when I saw that this rifle come out, I actually didn't know that it had any of the changes or upgrades from the standard rifle other than the stock is adjustable. And that I really like. So I can shorten the stock down to from, uh, I think, 13.75 uh, inches to 12.75 inches. And so that'll get it to a length of pull that is more functional for me. As you're watching this review, you might see me struggling a little bit, racking the bolt. That's just because the stock is at my maximum uh, kind of length. It's, it's kind of uncomfortable for me to use. Uh, so that's why I purchased it. But it has some upgrades. It has a three-position safety rather than a two-position safety. So we have it on safe right now. Then you've got fire. And then you have a third position where you can't pull the trigger, but you can rack the bolt and manipulate the firearm. So there's still a safety on it. Before, it just had uh, safe and then it had fire. So Ruger has traditionally in their Hawkeye family of rifles that were based on the Mauser guns, they had a safety that pivoted here and it was a three position safety that worked that same way. So I like that. 
Here's a little visual demo of the Ruger Legacy Hawkeye safety that's based on a Mauser three position safety. So in the rear position, you can't operate the bolt and the gun is on safe there. Then if you uh, put the safety to the uh, second position, you can operate the bolt but cannot pull the trigger. And then in the complete forward position, you can pull the trigger. Has a adjustable bolt knob that needs to be Loctited, so you can switch this bolt knob out for varying sizes. Doesn't look like Ruger has any on their website yet, uh, but this is early on. I imagine Ruger and other companies will start producing one, so I'm going to Loctite that and get that on so it doesn't come off. Uh, it has the Picatinny rail, which is standard to the original rifle. I wish that on all their Hawkeyes, uh, so they're still making the Hawkeyes. Um, I wish that they would move away from the proprietary Ruger mounts and they would just put a Picatinny rail. I've noticed they're doing that on some of their newer offerings, but guns like the uh, M77 uh, compact laminate, I wish it would come with this because then you could just throw a red dot. You could throw any number of things you wanted onto this rail. So I really like that it comes with the rail. The original came with a rail. The stock is a different coloration. I think it's a very handsome stock. It's got a little more grooves and refinement in it compared to the standard or original ranch rifle, and so I like that. This stock, this is just a handsome gun. In, in addition to that, we have a, a removable or adjustable cheek pieces that you can purchase um, from Ruger's website. The stock, if we come back to the stock component here, it's adjustable, but it doesn't come with any of those parts. And they did that, I think, in order to keep the price of this rifle down. Maybe many people or most people won't use this adjustable feature. They'll just shoot the gun as is. Uh, but for about $30, you can purchase um, the shims or little components that go in there that shorten the length of pull. You can't just run the butt pad here against there. You're going to need shims. Um, it takes AR-15 magazines, okay? And you can uh, shoot uh, 5.56 five, and I believe 2.223 through it. Some people are really worked up about that. Does it have a wild chambering? People have been like that uh, with the Mini 14. So many years ago, I did reviews on the Mini 14s quite a bit, and people really worried about that. And the Mini 14, I called Ruger. I researched it, and Ruger said, yeah, you can shoot 2.23 and 5.56 five, through their modern Mini uh, 14. So I'm sure that's the case here, guys. One thing I really like about this uh, ranch rifle, the, the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, the Ruger American Ranch Rifles, is the fact that they have last shot hold open. So when you fire your last round and the magazine is empty, okay, you cannot drive it forward. It lets you know that the firearm is empty, and I love that feature. I know some rifles that were used in World War I or World War II had this feature, but I'm not aware, and I'm sure they're out there, I'm not aware of other modern rifles that have that last shot hold open feature in terms of bolt action rifles. So leave a comment down below. Let me know. I'm sure YouTube is a great way of finding out that you don't know certain things. So if there are other rifles in the bolt action configuration like this one that have last shot hold open, I love that. Maybe the Steyr Aug is one of those. I don't think so, though. Uh, but I just love that, that for a $600 rifle, you have all these features. You're able to use standard detachable um, AR-15 magazines, all the different sizes, and you get that last shot hold open. I'll show that for you again here. So you run it back, and then you can't close it. I just think that is awesome. Now, we have this beautiful Cerakote or Duracote that's gray that I really like, and I love the fact that the barrel is fluted. I mean, look how gorgeous this is. This rifle is costing around $600, and yet it has these just beautiful, beautiful additional features. It comes with a muzzle brake, a proprietary Ruger muzzle brake, very similar to the ones they have on the Gunsight Scout in certain configurations. I don't like those muzzle brakes. It's beautiful. Lots of upscale guns are running muzzle brakes. This is 5.56. I don't need a muzzle brake on it, and I also don't want to eat the blast or have the people around me eat the blast from that muzzle brake. So I'm running a can on it here today. I love that it's threaded. So, you know, just look at this thing. This is such a handsome, beautiful firearm people are worried about the stock the quality of the stock it looks like an expensive stock it has the paint job that you know early 2000s early 1990s that really expensive uh, stock companies were putting on their on their guns it looks really good people are worried about how durable it is or how much flex there is and you can see okay there is a little bit of a flex there in the forend um you know you got to think about price point. This looks like a really expensive gun. I'm shooting good groups with the firearm, all right? So, and I'm, I'm leaning it 
on the foreign. So you're you're just going to have to decide what's good for you. I'm sure other companies will come out and make if they haven't already uh, stocks that you can put on this. But I, I really don't want to do that because I just think it's such a handsome and beautiful package as it comes from Ruger. I got a one dollar bill folded over and we're just going to see here if on this Ruger American Ranch Rifle Gen 2, if the barrel is free floated. And sure enough, look at that. Completely free free floated. That's amazing. You got to take that into consideration. I think this is an amazing package from how it looks and the features you're getting a lot of premium features for a, what I think is a relatively affordable price at around $600. I ended up shooting two more three-shot groups at 100 yards. I'm using, again, XM193 from Lake City. I really like the fact that this rifle feeds from standard AR-15 magazines, whether those are Magpul mags or others. It comes with a 10-round P-mag, at least my version did. The gun was 100% reliable with the 30 rounds or so we fired today. Doesn't mean the gun will be consistently reliable moving forward, but it does highlight the fact that we're not having problems in wet and cold environments. This is a, what we say, a one and a quarter inch group at 100 yards. I'm laying down. I've got a two and a half power magnified optic. So I'm just, I just know that I'm here, but... I can't really see this target defined. I can just see a circle with a crosshair through it. And just like the crosshairs just have this little blue on the sides there. Uh, I am so happy that the Ruger American Ranch Rifle Gen 2 has proven to be as accurate as the original Ranch Rifle. I have lusted over one of these for the last two and a half years as my buddy has paraded his around. And I'm so glad I was able to get my hands on one here. Uh, I'm just super excited about how accurate this gun is being. Some of you may be wondering about this bandolier that I've got here on my chest that you maybe have seen as I'm walking around. I think it's a German bandolier. It's not the American uh, bandoliers uh, that hold 5.56 five, stripper clips. This is not this. This is not cotton. This is some kind of um, nylon, and it holds really easily 10 round magazine. So Magpul and um, these other mags, um, Lancer mags as well, okay? It also holds a standard box of 20 rounds of ammo in it. Right down here, sorry, there's another mag. So it holds a standard box of 20 rounds of ammo in it uh, really easily. So I just really like it. I've got lots of 30 round mags, but I just like how easy it is to have that on me and be able to move and for this range review, I just thought, man, I'll just throw this thing on. There's, there's the info. So there's been some squabbling here over my last target. So those are the 20, uh, the 30 yard targets. I'm shooting all Lake City XM193. So that's relatively affordable ammo. That's the 50 yard targets. And I've been shooting these standing off that tripod. And then I laid down on the ground here, right? And so this was my second group. It was the best group. And uh, there's been some argument over the size of it. I thought it was sm uh, larger than one inch. And if we come here, it's actually smaller than one inch. Okay, if we look at that right there, that is under an inch laying down shooting. Maybe some people who bothered here will get the ruler just right. That is under an inch at 100 yards laying down shooting the Ruger American Ranch Rifle Gen 2. I think that's good shooting with XM193 Lake City 55 grain ball ammo, right? Here's a nice little reveal. There is my Ruger American Gen 2 ranch rifle, and there is an original with the uh, Coyote dip on it. And so there's a lot of similarities, but a few things that are different, and I do like the changes uh, just that they have done here on the Gen 2 version, but two excellent, accurate rifles. There's my initial impressions review here on the Ruger um, American Gen 2 Ranch Rifle. I'm just super happy with it. Thank you very much for your views and your subscriptions. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave them down below. If I've stated anything incorrectly, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comment section down below. If you'd like to support the Gear Tester YouTube channel, you can do so by buying products from our sponsors, affiliates, and friends. Companies like Topps Knives, Firebox Stoves, Excess Sights, Occam Defense Solutions, and Knives of Alaska. 
If you like this video, please subscribe to the Gear Tester channel. Hit the notification bell and accept all notifications so you'll be alerted when I release other quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear. This is the Gear Tester, signing off.